Hello and welcome back. In this module, we learn about Azure Architecture components that we we went through over the past few lessons. We'll go through each of the these components what we have learned so far uh, within this uh, short lecture to summarize our knowledge to apply to the Azure Architecture. To begin with that. So let's jump into the each of these to understand better what we have learned so far uh, in a summary point of view. So just to recall availability zones includes more than one data center. So even if an entire data center goes down within uh, within a certain region, if you have developed or deployed our application services to multiple availability zones, the other one that is still up will take over load of that specific applications and will stay up and running and deploying to multiple availability zones really protects applications from a single data center failure and doing so it allows us to gain higher level of availability for the applications and services that's kind of a, a recurring theme between availability zones and regions the both kind of interplay to allow us higher availability. With availability zones, we're really trying to protect ourselves from a single data center failure by making sure that our applications and services are deployed to at least two data centers into different availability zones. Now, with our lesson on Azure regions, we took a step further and we learned how Regions include multiple availability zones or within their own multiple data centers. We also learn about how we can deploy our applications and systems uh, to multiple regions and with availability zones as a combination, we are looking to protect against a single data center failure. When we deploy to multiple regions, we are uh, looking to protect against multiple data center failures or even an entire region failure and this is uh, less likely to happen but it is still not impossible right and you know uh, multiple data centers in a certain region might all go down because of an earthquake or some sort of natural disaster or entire region might actually go down for some reasons which we may not see but there's a possibility and maybe a natural disaster of, of some sort of earthquake or flood uh, effects uh, takes out of an entire region worth of data centers goes down so if you are deploying your application servers or services to multiple regions even if uh, that happens our second region is still hosting our applications or service or services uh, which will absorb the load from other region which is up and running our customers won't even able to tell us or tell that one of our data center was down whether you go with availability zones and deploying to multiple availability zones or deploying to multiple regions what we are really talking about here is the higher availability for our applications and services by making higher availability we no need to tell about any apologies to our customers that our site went down or going through our data to see if we lost anything or any of these uh, nonsense things that happen when our sites or applications actually go down. We don't have to worry about that. Our business is continuous nearly all the time when we are on Azure and when we have deployed on multiple regions and that actually let us focus on our business and not bringing our systems back online every time a disaster happens. Also, it's worth nothing that we can get a higher availability faster by going with the cloud and I mean faster compared to if we were to do with our own data centers. You can think how much it would actually cost, how long it would take for us to build our multiple data center. You can think about how much it would cost and how long it would take for us to build multiple data centers with all that redundancies that Azure currently offering for us uh, to build a uh, 
similar that kind of you know multiple different geographic regions since azure already has a world-class data centers all around the world it's a lot cheaper and faster for us to just pay or just buy into that uh, specific services and and we can start our business uh, from there on and so not only do uh, get higher availability but we get it immediately based on Azure cloud and finally it gives us easy disaster recovery and backup options let's say that we have deployed our applications and services to multiple regions like we were uh, supposed to do and by some of the fluke of luck, let's say both of these regions usually go down because of some huge, horrible natural disasters. Well, even in that case, uh, when we go down with Azure, it's very easy to recover our assets and get back up. We could just identify the third or even fourth region that are still active and deploy all those assets instantly and those regions and get back uh, get back to the business as soon as possible with our own data centers we would have to literally build a new data center before we could recover our assets to there it's a lot more to do ourselves and all these really at the end of the day just adds up on us and keeping our applications up and running as much as possible I uh, want to deploy them as widely as possible there's no real one single point of failure whether it's a specific data center or even a region one problem in one area shouldn't bring our entire application stack down we have covered high availability that we get of it availability zones and regions in our next lesson also we took uh, we had a look on resource groups and we looked at how we can use these resource groups to easily manage all the resources that shares the same life cycle we took uh, a look at some of the examples that have taken uh, such as virtual machines and sql servers uh, tables uh, into storage and all these various resources we looked at how we could group these together since they all share the same life cycle so we could manage and administer our resources easily and all as one group the real point of the resource group is that it is uh, consolidates our management and administrative activities so that we can perform a few functions as possible but affects the most resources as possible and it's really a way to organize our resources by their life cycle or by their kind of logical function resource groups are a great way to group everything together to keep everything organizing from a business perspective and they are free as well it doesn't cost any money to set up or a specific resource group or any of the number of resource groups so we might as well as take advantage of the features that they are giving us since they are free for us and finally in our last lesson we talked about the azure resources we took uh, that's a resource manager that's nothing but the arm some Sometimes we call it as ARM, which is a single centralized deployment management service that lets us a variety of things like create, update, delete any type of Azure resources, apply access control, auditing, tagging against of any of the resources, or deploy and take our resources offline when we need to do. We also Took a look at using a template that's called ARM templates and how that's very useful and helpful for larger organizations to be able to repeat their deployment uh, cycle or deployment uh, templates or deployment across multiple environments like test development and production and the main benefit of using as your resource manager or ARM is that it saves us a time and money by giving a single service that we can use or uh, manage all our resources together vice versa having to do them individually as well some of extra productivity tools like templates that we talked about providing us even more value in being to continuously redeploy our assets and get them uh, same result 
every time. And finally, with the tie into Active Directory, being able to allow for security operations like access control and rule-based access control. We get the security that we needed to make sure that rogue individuals inside our organization aren't allowed to create any new resources or cost us money even deleting resources and take our applications or systems down not only as your resource manager or ARM in short the single centralized service to use to manage all the resources and encapsulated security as well making it a very well rounded product that we can use for all our maintenance needs. When we look at these together versus doing this in our data center, we get higher availability, higher availability zones and regions that would cost us tremendous amount of money to replicate ourselves. With resource groups, we get the ability to group and manage our resources together when we would also cost us a lot of money to replicate ourselves if we were to try to do that against our own data center and with the Azure resource manager as a complete service management layer again we get we keep getting additional value by using the Azure cloud with these tools that let us simplify our management and administrative activities using these simpler services I hope that helped you to get better understanding some of ways that we can use Azure architectural components that we talk within this module. I hope this is helpful for you. Thank you for watching this. I'll see you in the next lesson.